Good morning, everybody, in TGIF. Happy Friday. Tiff is a day off, so I get him to myself which I'm happy about. We have a special guest. I don't know about you, but I am definitely missing the sounds of spring. The birds chirping, kids playing at the park, and definitely this. Polanco drops it. Here comes Lyles. Throw to the plate, and the Bulls win! Are you kidding? <laughs> We are super excited to get our sports fix this morning with the voice behind that call. It is Brian Anderson, the play-by-play -play announcer for the Milwaukee Brewers. What's up, Brian? Uh, me, I'm up. <laughs> you know what? I I'm I'm impressed you just knew what day it was, TGIF. I had no idea what day it was. I don't know what month it was. And who gets a day off right now, by the way? You're solo today. Uh, yeah, I'm solo. Tips off. But I'm okay with that because I get to do the whole <laughs> interview by myself. I, I saw a picture of you just before we were going to be on in, our, in my monitor, and it looks like you've had a haircut. Do you have an underground salon you've been visiting? Oh, you know, that's a beautiful <laughs> thing about, uh, you know, my wife, who is a very talented, multi versatile she has her cosmetology license from way back she was a school teacher for a long time so yeah we we got it we got in-house uh applications on that matter i finally got a haircut I, I hung in there as long as i could last time she cut my hair she was pregnant my daughter's 20 and i thought that this wow. was a little too close to some parts of my face and neck that with those scissors that i was comfortable with during those pregnancy years. I can't believe your daughter's 20. I, I met mm. you way back when my oldest is 22. It's incredible. Um, so how have yep. you been doing? You've been the, the Brewers TV announcer for 14 years. There's your beautiful family. Mm. I think your daughter and your <laughs> wife are absolutely gorgeous, by the way. Yes, I agree. Yeah, um, I so agree. How are you doing? Good. Everything's great here. You know, we um, obviously when I stopped down I was at the Big Ten tournament in the uh, second week of March I think that was March 12th I'd done an NBA game in San Antonio in front of a packed arena for TNT flew to Indianapolis for the Big Ten tournament and that's when everything just kind of stopped uh, March 11th the news came down March 12th we were actually at the arena ready to call the game in Indianapolis between Rutgers and Michigan and then uh, we were sent home and I I've been home ever since um, just kind of quarantine I took about eight days and quarantine there just in case I had it. I had been to spring training. I had been to L.A. a couple of times for NBA games. So just I was really cautious uh, in that time. And then uh, I've been home ever since. And I, I've been doing a lot. Actually, we the Brewers have been great on the social handles. We've done all kind of entertainment um, events. Uh, we had the Brewers virtual happy hour last night. I've done a lot of voiceover work for other companies and um, so it's been somewhat busy, different busy, but somewhat busy. I've really enjoyed being home, though, with my family. That's that's probably the main takeaway. Yeah, and you're not usually home in the spring, so this right. is unusual for you. We talked to Craig Council a couple weeks ago. I told him, I shared with him that we've been inviting Christian Yelich for, I don't know, years to come on. We call it the Yelly Couch. So if you happen <laughs> to talk to him and you can put in a good word for the morning blend, tell him to come on over. You know, I'll do that for you just because I like you guys so much. Uh, he is in L.A., though. That's a, that's an early call for Yelich. I think his, he's kind of on the teenage hours now. I think he's waking up about 11, 11 a.m. That'd be 1 o'clock your time. Maybe if he had an afternoon show, that might work. Yeah, Craig said our chances were pretty slim. Okay, so let me ask you about this. Baseball owners have approved a July 1st start. Players not happy about it. How do you see things playing out? Yeah, I, don't, I think um, what I've been saying is all along, even going back into March when everything stopped down, um, there have been contingency plans. So as you hit these markers, this is what we could do now. Um, and obviously that line has been moved. And baseball and all other sports, they have these contingency plans lined out until there's a drop dead where you can't play any more games. Um, so I think this is where we are in this phase. This is the proposal that we could potentially get back to playing. Um, I wouldn't say the brew or the, the players are unhappy. I'd say there are some players that are concerned about their well-being, their families, the quarantine issue. Um, but I think everybody is along the same lines of wanting to get back to play. Every player I talk to is eager to get back to perform and to play. Um, 
So I think it's moving in the right direction. Unfortunately, the negotiations are kind of out there in the public. There's a lot of scoop going on and a lot of uh, leaking going on. Uh, probably would be best served underground for now until they can walk out of the door with an agreement. But I think it'll get done if, if in fact, they decide to play. I do think it'll get done. I'm not worried about that so much. But, you know, July is kind of the target that I'm hearing as well. But that could always be bumped down the line as something happens. If there's another outbreak, if, if, if uh, a few players test positive, then everything changes. So just we've never dealt with anything like this before. And trying to figure out how to make this work, not just from a player perspective, but from a broadcaster and broadcasting perspective is a challenge as well. So all of those discussions are ongoing. Yeah, yeah, it, that totally makes sense. Uh, one of the things I wanted to ask you is how you're keeping your skills sharp. I'm surprised how much work mm. you're actually doing right now, but I also know that you've been avoiding getting bored because there's a video <laughs> I saw of you, a TikTok video. I watched it about <laughs> 10 times because I think you're so talented. Check this out. Oh, nice. oh man. How much did you practice this? Oh, my God. So this is a Mother's Day gift. So my, my daughter was a dancer in high school. She went to Arrowhead High School. They, they had an incredible dance team. And she's so talented and fluid, and it's easy for her. And my wife basically said, for my Mother's Day gift, and that wasn't the only gift, but that was one of the, the things, you know, Mother's Day, you can't say no. So she goes, we're making a TikTok video, and you're going to be in it. So I thought I had it nailed, but, man, I had to flame on the choreography. We, <laughs> we did. There was actually another TikTok um that is one of those dub smashes from dance moms that my daughter did basically after the 60th uh, time that we tried to record this she was shaming me in front of the whole world but <laughs> yeah it was pretty fun i enjoyed it i had a lot of fun doing it it was a great workout i had some serious back sweat going on oh, after I that it. i was lathered that that moonwalk was very impressive i gotta <laughs> say that harkens back to a couple of decades but that was fantastic yes. i was impressed yes Again, um, that's when you forget choreography. You got to go into the bag a little bit. I, I forgot what the le the last step was, so I just I ad libbed that. I loved it. I thought it was it was hilarious, <laughs> and I would love that for Mother's Day too. I got to just ask you because we ran out of time. Um, just kind of what you're looking forward to, where your mind is at as you look toward baseball, hopefully coming back soon, because so many fans are just waiting for their fix. Yeah, I would just uh, recommend everybody hold fast. You know, I mean, it's it, we all want the same goal. We just need to make sure it's safe to do it. And, you know, it's it's getting pretty divided and it's getting pretty heated right now. I would just encourage everybody to try to calm those waters a little bit. You know, I'm no uh, great sage, but it just it, it feels unproductive uh, on a lot of areas. And, and I just made an appearance at a hospital earlier this week and just to look at the the eyes of those uh, frontline healthcare workers, you know, they're dealing with a lot right now. And and I understand we need to get our economy back and we will, but we need to do it in a safe manner, especially if you're heading out as we've reopened here. Just keep your distance and wear a mask and wash your hands and just be cool, man. Just be cool about it. Don't it, we're not back to normal. There's never going to be what we used to be. It's going to be a new normal. So let's try to make the best of it as we can. We're not going to have games in front of fans this year. It's not going to happen. So let's hopefully get to the point where we can enjoy sporting events. I'm doing a golf event next weekend um, called The Match on TNT. So that's one of the early uh, pieces that we're trying to put together like how to televise these sporting events so just be patient we're all working at the same goal here yeah yeah uh, i'm glad you mentioned the match the uh, the champions for charity tiger woods peyton manning phil mickelson mm -hmm. tom brady and you're you're going to be announcing it hosting it i mean that's a star-studded golf game right there yeah there's a lot of legendary people and then i'm in there to just make sure we get the commercial on time so <laughs> charles barkley and uh Trevor Immelman, the Masters champion, will be my partners in the booth. Well, if fans can't get to the ballpark um, this season, we're lucky that we have you announcing the game. So really appreciate what you thank do. You. It's awesome talking to you, Brian. Yeah, thank you for having me. Good morning to you guys. Have a great day. Thanks. You too.